top story today, a message for the federal government from a Canadian who's been stranded in Kenya since May. Suad Haji Muhammad can now legally come home. Kenya dropped charges of identity fraud against her today. She's been stuck in Nairobi since officials did not believe she was the same person shown in her passport. Now, this case is alarming for any Canadian who travels abroad, but for our next guest, he wasn't surprised about the way Mohammed was treated, given her Somali background. Ahmed Hussein is president of the Canadian Somali Congress. He joins us now from Ottawa. How have Somali Canadians been reacting to this story, sir? Well, they've been extremely disappointed with uh, her ordeal. But uh, I must say they weren't completely surprised because uh, there have been uh, numerous cases of uh, Canadian Somalis who have uh, had difficulties with uh, Kenyan police as well as Kenyan immigration officials due to that country's uh, uh, common uh, uh, problem with corruption. Corruption, how do you mean, sir? Well, Transparency International, which tracks uh, corruption in, uh, in the world, uh, always tra uh, tracks corruption and, and has consistently listed Kenya as one of the most corrupt countries in the world. Uh, specifically, they have zeroed in on their police forces and the immigration officials and others. Um, the Transparency International, for example, has said that uh, uh, if you encounter a Kenyan police officer, the likelihood of being solicited, uh, the likelihood of being asked for a bribe is 93 percent. Um, immigration officials in Kenya consistently ask people for bribes as a way to uh, make them, uh, you know, uh, ease their way of leaving the country. And if you refuse, you might have to go through a lot of uh, difficulties. Uh, Suad's case, she has confirmed, we always suspected Suad had refused to give the Kenyan official, immigration official who uh, detained her a bribe. And she has subsequently confirmed that uh, all her troubles began when she refused to bribe the Kenyan immigration official on her way out of the airport. Have you heard of other cases of this happening to people, sir? Actually, yes. There's a worse case than uh, Suad's case. Uh, there's a young uh, autistic teenage uh, boy who's stuck in Nairobi for almost three years. His name is Abdi Hakim Mohammed. He's a Canadian citizen. He's never committed a crime. And uh, he, has, he has a similar problem with Suad. The Canadian High Commission does not believe that uh, he resembles the picture on his passport. His mother is in Ottawa. She has, uh, 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 she has brought affidavits of witnesses who know her and him. And uh, they have both, both mother and son have uh, offered to take a DNA test. But uh, neither Passport Canada or the Canadian High Commission in Nairobi have taken up their offer. So this boy has been stuck in Nairobi for the last uh, almost three years. Is he there with family, sir, or is he all alone? No, he's, he's there with extended family. And because he doesn't have a Canadian passport, He's virtually stateless, so the Kenyan officials, the Kenyan police that I just mentioned earlier, uh, harass him for bribes, and uh, his Somali ethnicity makes him a target for harassment uh, and, uh, and all kinds of problems in, in Kenya. Be and he's autistic. He needs care, and he needs to come back to Canada as soon as possible. So Somali and Kenyan uh, relations are, are, can be quite stressful, tense. Well, uh, there's a... Uh, hundreds of thousands of Somali refugees in Kenya and uh, they've, they're virtually stateless so I'll, a lot of times the Kenyan police harass them and solicit bribes from them. The problem is that uh, when Canadians of Somali background go to Kenya uh, for business or family visits or work with NGOs, uh, they get harassed. They get harassed at the airport, they get harassed on the streets by Kenyan police and when they try to leave the country to come back to Canada, they always ask for a bribe. And if they don't give that bribe, they might suffer the same ordeal as uh, Suad Mohammed. And so what we in the Canadian Somali Congress uh, ask for, we're happy that the Prime Minister has committed to a full account of what exactly happened with Suad. But we want a more comprehensive review of the way the Canadian High Commission in Nairobi deals with, Canadian, uh, with Kenyan institutions, because Kenyan institutions have been uh, documented to be inherently corrupt. So we should, I think, uh, as, a, as a government, we should, uh, I think the Canadian government should take
whatever the Kenyans tell them with a grain of salt. And I think that uh, Canadians of Somali heritage should be given more benefit of the doubt when they get stuck in places like Nairobi. Ahmed Hussein, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. You're, you're very welcome. Thank you. Ahmed Hussein is president of the Canadian Somali Congress. He joined us from Ottawa.